Hi, I'm sitting here with Steven Sorokov, about to talk to one of my favorite people on earth, so talented, star of stage, screen, television, movies, recordings, everything, it's Lainey Kazan. Hello, Jamie, oh, I'm my. so happy to be here. Well, we you. are both happy that you are here, and I mean, I know in the early days I just got to admire you from afar when I used to go see you at the Persian room. And remember the remember wonderful had, yes, Persian oh, room? I remember we had the same hairdresser. We did. <laughs> we absolutely did. And the same press agent, Richard Gordon, oh, who's still a great, great friend. friend. Absolutely. Well, I mean... And of course Shelley Markham. Our, our musical director in common. I mean, we just, there's so many people that we know and love in common. But I... I used to watch you singing in clubs and just admiring you. I mean, you started in Funny Girl and just shot from there. You want to tell us that story? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, well, I was understudy to Barbara Streisand, and um, I never went on. I, w I went on twice in one day, a year and a half after the show opened. And um, everywhere I went in New York, people would say, you know, if you ever go on, call me. So I'd write their name and number down. And finally, uh, I got the call that I was going on, and I said, oh, oh well, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I went and I rehearsed with the, the, the cast, who I'd never been on stage with, because I only rehearsed with the understudy. So Sidney Chaplin dragged me from pillar to post, told me where to go, and I was ready. I went into Barbara's dressing room, and I dressed in her dressing room with her dresser. Oh my God. I thought I was going to die. For, I was so thrilled and nervous. And then I called everybody on my list, and they all showed up, and so did Barbara. Oh. Yeah, and she passed me. She stood in the hall, put on her hat and coat, and walked out on the stage. I was, Jamie, you remember my husband, Peter Daniels? Uh -huh. Yeah. He and I, we just sat there. He, he was in the pit. He couldn't play. I, didn't, I couldn't move. And I, I went next door and just cried my eyes out. And the next morning when I woke up, it was headlines all over the paper. Show goes on, but Lainey doesn't. It ain't funny, girl. So I walked to the, very sheepishly to the theater, and Ray Stark was out there, and the company manager, Marvin, oh my god, and all these wonderful people. And they said, look, you're going on, but you cannot tell a soul. So I said, well, can I at least call my mother? Ah. And she had a duplicate list. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody came back, and I got reviewed in Time Magazine and Newsweek and The Times. And it was just, it was stunning, and it was almost too much for me. It was. It just, I became a, a, a like a pawn. And everyone wanted to handle me and manage me. And I just, I just, you know, I had just graduated college. And I, I was kind of a nice Jewish girl from Brooklyn. I didn't know what hit me. But I wasn't an innocent in that way. I wasn't um, somebody, because my father was a bookmaker. And he, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for and years. And he didn't exactly make books. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought he was in publishing until <laughs> til I was about 12. But I, I went, uh, you know, he used to take me to nightclubs. I saw Sophie Tucker and I saw everybody. My parents took me everywhere. So I knew about the business, but from a distance. And it was an overwhelming uh, time for me. And uh, I started singing in all the grand hotels all over the world. You know, the, the Persian Room, the Empire Room, um, Rainbow Room, uh, in Paris and London. And, wow. you know, I stayed at the Connaught and I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> there I was. And I remember the, the album cover. I think um, I still have that record. I have one, too, with me, actually. I made it into a CD. Oh, I don't, cool. Renee, do we have one of those albums, the red ones? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I remember the, the uh, disc jockeys, William B. Williams. Oh, yeah. He'd say, we haven't gotten around to playing the record yet. We're still playing the cover. Ah, how <laughs> wonderful. Well, you've gone on to star in so I mean, television, all these, I mean, not only appearances on things like The Tonight Show and, and Dean Martin and whatever, but you went on to star in 
many movies, and my, one of them being my absolute favorite, my favorite year, written by our mutual friend, Norman, Norman Steinberg. Steinberg. <laughs> How's he doing? He's doing great. He's teaching, and, and he's living out in, in Brooklyn and upstate, and he's as funny as ever. And I, I mean, that is just a classic movie. Oh, what a joy that was. You know, we, we were very friendly. And we'd go to these parties, and at, at the parties, he'd make me talk in a Yiddish accent, because it was funny, I guess. And then I, he, he said to me, I'm sending you a script. So he sent me a script, and he told me, you're going to play the journalist. And I, I, it wasn't funny. I said, Norman, you have to let me play this Jewish woman. I know her. She's in my bone. She's in my blood. She sits outside my apartment building, my mother's friends. Those are my mother's friends. So he said, let me, let me set up a meeting with uh, Mel Brooks. Wow. So I went and I had a meeting with Mel Brooks and I came dressed as the character. Because at that time I was the chanteuse, I was this you know, bombshell. Right. So I came as that character. And he said, you've got the part. Ah. And that's how that happened. And of course the die was cast. There's never been a part that I've played where I've been my own age or you know, my own ethnicity. So it's been a very interesting ride. Well, in Beaches, you played Bette Midler's mother, mother, and you're not much <laughs> older than she is. I think two years. <laughs> <laughs> and then you did My Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, two. And we did one and two. And, two. and it looks like we're going to do three. Wow. Wow. So it's been a good ride. It's been a good ride. And also, of course, now you're back in New York, and you've been playing at the Iridium. You've uh, got the last night tonight. Uh, no, tomorrow. Well, no, tonight, oh, yeah, tonight and, and tomorrow, tomorrow night, two shows each. Um, we will be there tomorrow night to see excellent, you. Excellent, excellent. And we're really looking forward. So tell us about the show at Iridium. Um, I haven't been feeling really all that well. You want to tell us about why? Yeah. I had a terrible accident this year in April. And uh, it was my fault. I went up a one-way street the wrong way and hit someone's head on in front of the Greek restaurant. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really insane. And they took me to the hospital, and I, I, I broke a lot of ribs, and I broke my clavicle, and my heart went into AFib, and my, mm. my knee was crushed. So I, I just, but I, I haven't worked since April. That's like seven months. Wow. I, it was time, they made an offer to me, and it was a, such a generous offer. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go do it. So I hobble on the stage. Um, my voice is not as great, I think, as good or as focused as it was. But my heart is there, my soul is there, and I love what I do. I love the audience, and I feel so blessed to be alive, first of all, and to, um, oh my god, I'm going to cry. Oh. And to just be able to sing, just be able to sing, because it's my first love. Well, and you're so, so good at it, Thank really you. so good at it. Well, we look forward to actually being there and, and cheering you on. And don't, don't worry about a thing. Everybody loves you. Oh. I, I mean, I don't, I, I, I think that, that people, you know, give a little uh, Generosity. I, I, I have felt that, and I have felt the love, and I have felt the appreciation. Uh, for for me, I talk a lot about my life in this show, um, and it's it's been very interesting for me. It's like therapy, you know. Yeah. So it's been uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and I I really like the management. It's one of those clubs where I started out in. You know, it's like where I started right. out. And it's, but it's, the audience are very hip and very happening, and I'm having a great time. Yeah. So I was a co-producer on the documentary Broadway, The Golden Age. You gave one of the great interviews, which will probably, you know, hopefully one of these days we're going to get to show the, all these interviews in their entirety. It's a great piece of documentary work. Thank you. Well, soon we're coming out with Broadway Beyond the Golden Age. Oh, I like that. And it's, it's going to be a trilogy, but... Uh, you know, do, do you have any other showbiz stories you want to uh, share with us? Oh, my. Some of them are not so nice. Ah, of <laughs> course, worked, those are the ones we want to hear. <laughs> I worked with Ethel Merman. Whoa. Yeah, I worked with Ethel Merman 
in um, the on the Dean Martin show. Right. Okay. I worked with her several times, and she lived in my building when I lived at the Madison Hotel. She was in the next apartment building, and they didn't like her because she was a uh, she was a fixture there. She was paying like forty cents rent, you know, right. and she never tipped anybody, and she was very difficult. So, but I always wanted to open my door and go Ethel. Oh, you know, <laughs> but I didn't. So we finally got on this show together, and she knew that no, you have, you could watch it on YouTube. Oh, okay. It was as though she was in one. There was nobody on the stage with her. She just sang, and Dean Martin and I were in the back, and we decided to do whispering. Well, and she was singing, smile, though your heart is, <laughs> she was a riot. And we fell on the floor at the end. We oh, just, my God. Yeah, it was great. But that well, we'll was now my, have to YouTube it, this. That, right, that was my uh, Ethel Merman story. She was quite a character. Too funny. I went to school with her son. I went to college yeah, with didn't he Bob he Six. Yeah, away. unfortunately, yeah. Um, I, I, I believe so. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Um, Unless she's hiding him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, were there any other, you know, little highlights in, I mean, I'm little, there were so many highlights in your career that, that when you think back on it, are some of your favorite moments? Or? I think working with Peter O'Toole was one of the highlights of my life. Uh, he was so generous, so appreciative of me and what I was doing that I, he made my performance. It was him that did it. I love him. I loved him. And I remember one night we were at a party for the Golden Globes or the Academy Awards or something, and he saw me all the way coming towards him, and he got up and he walked to me, and he gave me the biggest kiss, and I was so touched, so Aww. touched. Well, he was so funny in oh. my favorite year when he said, was I'm a star, I'm not oh. an actor. I'm, I'm not an actor, I'm a movie star. <laughs> That was a brilliant Too film. funny. Now, what about Beaches? That was another highlight, that I think. That was, and I've, I've, I've made lifelong friends from that movie. Bonnie Bruckheimer. Oh, right. Bette Midler. And Iris. Iris Dart. Iris Dart. Iris Rayner Dart, yeah, who yeah. I grew up with in Pittsburgh. Really? Yes. We, I thought she was from Baltimore. No, she was from Pittsburgh, uh, just I think a year ahead of me. She was my brother's date for his sweet 16 birthday oh, party. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love her. She's yeah, terrific. she's terrific. Well, uh, I, I'm just delighted to chat with you today. And yeah. is there anything else you want? Well, what about your CD? My, I, I have two CDs, well, three CDs out. My first, very first album, which is right now the one that you have somewhere. And then I have um, uh, the Chanteuse is Loose, which I just released because I owned it. And I decided to put it out. It's I, I, I I, I, um, I made that album at the Playboy Club in 1978, so oh it's a vintage. Oh my God, I remember the Playboy Club on, on 1 East 59th Street. Right, and then I had one in LA as well, right. Laney's Room. Right, Laney's I room remember East Laney's, Laney's Room. room West. <laughs> and um, I just, uh, I put that out, then I have one out called uh, In the Groove with my daughter who sings her fanny off. And then I have my last album, which is called um, Body and Soul. And that's most of the stuff I'm doing in this show. Wow. Well, I have a wonderful story <laughs> that was because I went to your opening years ago at Ibis. Remember Ibis on oh the my east side? God. And it might have even been somebody who was working for you who came over to me before the show. I was like, thank you so much for coming. My daughter is such a fan. And I went, wow, I have a fan. And then I go to the after party and she comes over again and she says, she plays your records until there's no grooves left. I had never made a rest record. So I finally said, I don't thinking? want to embarrass you, but who do you think I am? And she said, I know exactly who you are. You're Jamie DeRoy of Jackie and Roy. <laughs> at your opening. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's great. Anyway, oh, Lainey, thank you Jamie. so much for doing and, this today and, in and the rain. And oh, my know, God. Shelley told me to give you a great big hug. Oh, uh, well, he was so sorry he couldn't stick around to come to the show. He had, he had to go back. He did all the music. 
Yes, he told me he was working very hard on yeah, these we charts. Did a we do a lot, a lot of Latin stuff. I have hungered, I hungered. I hired a conga player. Oh wow! And he's wonderful. Oh, terrific! Well, I wish you all the best at Iridium and with everything you're doing and a really a speedy, speedy recovery. Thank you. I'm going to have my knee replaced. Oh wow! Okay. In January. Okay. Well, we will we'll, we'll come and take care of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lady Kazan, I love you. Thank you so Jamie. much. Thank you.